Malcolm Washington's new film is the August Wilson adaptation, The Piano Lesson, out on Netflix now. I, I, I guess, Malcolm, uh, congratulations on this film. I wanted to start right at the top of the opening of the film, which is this really arresting sequence of Fourth of July celebration, juxtaposed like the reclaiming of the family piano. I, I love this scene. I was immediately like, really kind of grabs you by the lapel, I feel like. I guess, why was it important for you to start with that and like kind of like really set the stage for the film? Yeah, you know, that was a really early idea. And and it was, I thought it was really important to recontextualize the story that you're going to see uh, just after that. And and I think in the in the medium of film, we have so many opportunities and, and that I wanted to honor the medium that we were working in. Um, so kind of getting a chance to visualize some of the themes that we're going to come back to later um, and reframe the story to the story that I was really interested in telling, which is like Black American reclamation, right? Like uh, a, a reclaiming and retelling of your histories and your identity while also delivering an experience that's that's purely image and sound. You know, there's not much dialogue there. It's just um, visual storytelling and 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 sound and and how those things connect and and so just using using those tools, it was, it was exciting to to kind of set the audience up and say, hey, you know, you're in the hands of a filmmaker. This is a film now, like settle in, like this is going to be a ride. Did you have like, I mean, like, were you, I guess, like, kind of like, did you have inspirations? But was there anything you were thinking of for that sequence? Or you're like, oh, like, I like, like, had like any inspirations, I guess, for that? Yeah. Like So, so many inspirations. Um, a big one was I love Malcolm X. I love that film. I love the figure it represents. I love the autobiography. Um, in the film, you you get a sense of um, how Malcolm's uh, social consciousness kind of being developed or being influenced by the death of his father. And there's a really wonderful sequence in early on in that film um, with choir voices, where it's you see the story of his mother and father fighting um, on the night that would turn into his father's death. Um, and it was grand, and it was pastoral, and it was like just it felt like surreal too it was like this larger than life sequence and that was something that i was interested in because i think that stories of our ancestors when our when our family tells them to us it, they feel like these really big people you know they their their legacies are are huge or almost like supersede being human you know it's like so big so i wanted to kind of set the mythology of that up and and deliver on that yeah that's really really cool you mentioned like that, that this is like very cinematic. And I feel like immediately, like at the jump, you're just like, this is like, we're in for a, a real film here. And this is the third of the recent adaptations of August Wilson's like century cycle, right after Fences, which was incredibly acclaimed, directed by Denzel Washington, your father, who was a producer on this, and Ma Rainey, which Denzel also produced. I guess when you watch those films, when you knew you were going to do The Piano Lesson, and you, if, you, if you went back and watched those films, or just in general, like, what did you kind of take away from them in hindsight or even looking back at them, you know, like that you were like, oh, like they, this is really cool. Or like, this is something that I could see why they did this, but maybe I'll try something different, I guess. Yeah, maybe not from like a direct filmmaking standpoint, but I I really like this. I like this, our story deals so much with the concept of legacy and lineage, you know, and, and finding power and protection in that and and, and confronting that um, in a way to process its meaning so that you can move forward. And for me, I was, really i felt so much strength in knowing that this film would exist in the context of the other two and hopefully in the next seven you know that there will be at the end of this project that's like a 10 film long project there'll be this tapestry that's unfolded and each one will kind of speak to a different voice or concern of somebody in our culture you know because we come from a proud culture and and having different voices varied voices that kind of weave together this story of the black american experience in in this time in, in this century um, I think that's that's something that I, I looked to and I constantly was kind of working within that framework of a larger work. Yeah, that's really cool. Do you like you have obviously this was done as a Broadway revival in, in 22, I think. Right. And a, mo a lot of the cast transferred over uh, from that version to the film. But you have Daniel Deadweiler obviously stepping in uh, as well. And I guess like she's so wonderful in the film. And I guess for you, what what made you think like or uh, probably obvious, maybe, but like in terms of her as an individual, but also her fitting in with the ensemble and like why yeah. she works so well on both those kind of poles, I guess. Well, the truth is that she's just a phenomenal talent. So I think that she could work in, in a bunch of different scenarios, you know. But when I spoke to her, I think that we both just kind of connected on, um, we just spoke the same language. Like we were reading a lot of the same things. We had a lot of similar art references and 
and had um, a curiosity and desire to kind of take a story like this and in, in usher it into a new space. Um, and she's so present when she performs that I thought that it would be a great shakeup for everybody to come in and have her and Corey Hawkins, who's new as well, to have um, them come into the room and the energy in the room shifts when they walk into it. And the other actors, you know, Samuel Jackson's a, a damn legend. You know, my my brother and and Michael Potts and and Ray Fisher, they're all such present performers that they're going to respond to what you put in front of them. So if you can disrupt a little bit and add something different to the space, like they'll they feed off that kind of stuff. And they were interested in rediscovering this story, uh, re re uh, excavating their own character and and finding something new every day. That's did you also like I guess in terms of like them the guy like you said like Sam obviously and and your brother and 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 Ray and Michael like do you did you have to work with them I I don't even maybe like reframing even their performance and does this help in this like with having Danielle and Corey in the cast as well like reframing what they did on stage for what would work for the film right because I'm sure there's different like that type of performance or their performances are not going to just be the same, right? They're not doing the exact same yeah. thing they did on and, stage. And you're, like, speaking to each other. you're not speaking to an audience, you're speaking to each other. Mm -hmm. the, what, what, the, what the role of the camera in this situation plays, how you set up the space physically, how they move through it. And they're very smart. You know, Samuel Jackson has been in more movies than probably anybody. <laughs> you know, he's like, he's he's knows what we're doing. Um, but yeah, we had a lot of conversations in the beginning of what what the, what we're after in this film, you know, what, what we're doing. Um, and they understood. I think it was so I liked working in the ensemble where every you get to work with each actor differently. So, yeah, what I spoke to and how I spoke to Sam was very different from what I spoke to Danielle about how we how we spoke. Um, but it was wonderful. Everybody, everybody understood the assignment. They're all so great together. Did you get like you mentioned like John David's obviously a great actor. <laughs> like he's your brother. Did you get like a newfound sense of him as an actor that you didn't have having not directed him, I guess. Right. As I'm sure yeah, you've seen you know, it like, yeah. For like, sure. Directing is such a, it, you're, it's, you're, you're just watching, you're just observing. You're like, I look at the monitor. So I'm like looking into the monitor and I'm like falling into somebody's eyes. So I saw my brother in a new way that I hadn't seen him in before. And I was able to kind of just, and also I'm younger. So I've always watched him in relation to myself, you know, like, I like, how should I dress? I look to him for, you know, how, what, what should I listen to? I look to him for, but I, I realized I hadn't really just watched him for him and just like really spent time observing and and seeing him in that way so it really it really changed how i viewed him and it changed our relationship that's really cool do you i mentioned in terms of watching too i was wondering this like man i think ray fisher obviously is like a great actor and like like from his and on stage obviously too but i think for people who only know him on film from like snyderverse films or whatever they're going to be like really <laughs> blown away by his performances i think he's so wonderful in the film yeah and i guess were you able like like we said, like he did it on stage. So like, you know, like he's going to do a great job, but like watching it on the monitor like that, are were you like, man, he's really like just popping off. Cause I think he like pops off the screen. You really. know what? We, I, I, me and Ray had so, Ray is so curious. Like he's very, very smart. And he wants to, we, we went through the script so many times we talked, we had so many hours of conversation before, and he was interested in a new presentation of the character in the film. And, and he found something when we were honestly in, in the camera test, he was finding stuff that really informed what we were going to do for the next, you know, for the rest of the shoot. Um, but yeah, you know, for people that, that know him from DC world, it's like, Oh no, he cut his teeth on the stage. You know, he's <laughs> about this action. So it, it was dope to kind of reintroduce people to who he, like what's inside of him. And, and it's a really brilliant, sweet and sensitive and caring and empathetic actor. Yeah, he's so great. And I mean, that scene with him and Danielle is just like out of out Wonderful, of control. Yeah. It's so good. It's like yeah, really so great. Like, do you have like a lot of, I mean, like how much time do you have with the ensemble like to I rehearse, I guess, like you're kind of like really get them. And like, like you're saying, like they're all like incredibly professional actors who are very acclaimed and have but done this. A lot, you like, know, yeah. We're doing four or five, six pages a day, four characters, five characters moving through space. So it was a lot. But what we did was we rehearsed for an hour every morning. So we kind of treated it like a play in that sense of like we would set and and we wanted to have really dynamic like I didn't want just people standing around sitting around talking you know it's like it, need, it needed to be dynamic in the blocking we wanted to tell a story of the dynamic of the relationships in the blocking how they move through space like that's so important the the physicality of it was so important and how we move the camera around them was always intentional so we would we would set out an hour every morning and and just rehearse and block and go through everything 
and then basically shoot that work for the rest of the day. Wow. It's such a great film. I feel like we could talk about this for a long time, but we do have to wrap up here. Malcolm Washington, uh, director of The Piano Lesson. You can watch it on Netflix. This is great chatting with you, Malcolm. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.